Revlon, the greatest name in cosmetics, presents the 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Yes, the $64,000 question. If it's the finest of its kind in cosmetics, it's by Revlon. And now, the star of our show, where knowledge is king and the reward king size, Hal March! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Before we begin tonight's show, I'd like to say a few words about last week's show. Those of you who saw it will remember that one of our guests was Mr. Randolph Churchill. Uh, during the show, I asked Mr. Churchill the $128 question, and Mr. Churchill's mind went momentarily blank. Uh, I sincerely felt that Mr. Churchill knew the answer to the question, and therefore I was guilty of allowing him much too much time. Actually, I broke the rules of the game unwittingly. As a matter of fact, this is not the first time that I've been guilty of such a thing. At any rate, I even made the mistake of inviting Mr. Churchill back. After we got off the air, I completely agreed with the producers that I had allowed too much time and that Mr. Churchill should be disqualified. We discussed it with Mr. Churchill and he, of course, heartily agreed. He's a very gracious gentleman. As a matter of fact, now before he leaves for England, he has a few words that he'd like to say. Would you welcome Mr. Randolph Churchill? Mr. Churchill? <laughs> Thank you for the kind words you said. Well, not at all, Mr. Churchill, to satisfy my curiosity, to put my mind at ease, because actually it was a very unfortunate thing that happened last week. You did know the answer, didn't well, you? Well, I couldn't have done it better. And it was absurd that I couldn't recall it. But my mind went... Uh, it wasn't a blackout. And my mind sort of became like a jellyfish. I could, uh, could hardly function at all. Well, that happened. And uh, I couldn't have done it better, actually, to the grandson of yeah. the Lord Earn who employed Captain Boycott, I think the name was. Yeah. Uh, I've forgotten. I was a friend sorry, of yeah. mine and he <laughs> was killed actually in the Second War. And um, I'd often discussed it with him. Yeah. But already I sort of knew too much about it and my mind started playing around with that. And it was quite ridiculous, but remember that uh, Mary Queen Mary Queen of England, yeah. Bloody Mary as she was called, I believe the popular drink is called after her. Mm -hmm. She um, said that she would die with the word Calais written on her heart. This English possession was lost a long time ago, and I shall certainly die with the word boycott written on mine. Well, Mr. Churchill, if it's any comfort, I shall certainly die with the word Churchill written on mine. <laughs> uh, I really, I'm, I'm glad that you say you knew it because I felt very strongly that you did, and as I have a very bad habit of getting emotionally involved, and I really didn't realize how much time was spent. At any rate... Well, nor did I. They don't have a clock like they do at a higher level, which I yeah. unfortunately never reached. But really, I've come to the conclusion that, uh, I mean, some people can do it, but it's... 45, you ought to stick to your own job and not try and become a quiz kid. I, I don't think I'd have probably be licked on the third question anyway. Well, anyway, thanks a lot. It's been a very agreeable experience, and I fully understand why this is such a popular program, and I'm only sorry that I wasn't able to last a little bit longer. Well, Mr. Churchill, thank a lot you very of fun much for your lasting. kind words. You're a very gracious thank gentleman. You, thank you, and good night. him much too much time. <laughs> Bill, who was Revlon's first guest? Well, Hal, back for the third week on her climb to the $64,000 question is our champion from Italy, whose category is American history, Giovanna Ferrara. Buongiorno, Giovanna. Signor Comba. Buonasera, signor March. È molto piacere di rivederla. Buonasera. Um, Thank you. Grazie. That's a, that's a very interesting hat you have there, Giovanna. Is that a new Italian creation? Dice che è un cappellino piuttosto interessante. È una creazione della moda italiana, per caso. Oh, no. This is my university hat from the University of Pavia. And I, uh, I keep this this evening for good luck. Oh, good. This is um, like your American um, bunny. Bunny? Benny, come si ah, dice? Bene, vuol dire il Bini. Uh, Bini. Bini, Bini, yes. <laughs> That's why we start a pad among the kids in the neighborhood. But the University of Pavia, does, your, does the University of Pavia have a good football team? 
Ci vuole sapere se l'Università di Pavia ha una buona squadra di calcio, di football, come lo chiamano loro. Oh no, solo qualche volta si gioca a football. Però non si gioca quel il gioco che si chiamano dei quattro cantoni o dei quattro angoli. Well, he says actually uh, the University of Pavia, Italian universities don't really have the, uh, the same kind of teams, you know, they don't play games like that. Sometimes they do, but not the same game uh, with the four corners, like you have. Four corners? Yeah. I mean, billiards? C'è che il biliardo per caso. Oh no, de me, il, la partita che ho visto con la gente della Charles Pfizer and Company um, al Ebbets Field. Oh, she means the game that uh, she saw with the people of the Charles Pfizer and Company at Ebbets Field. Oh, cracks. Four corners. <laughs> well, actually, actually, baseball, uh, where they use round balls. Oh, they use the balli rotondi. Yes, yes, the game was between the Dodgers of Brooklyn and the Cincinnati Rossi. Yes. Cincinnati Rossi. All right. Well, Giovanna, your decision is going to come up in just a moment, but... And I'm going to find out what the decision is, but right now, un momento. Right now, here's what happened last week when the big news was announced: the news about the new dollar twenty-five Futurama. Marshall Field, Chicago. Send more Futuramas. Jordan Marsh, Boston. Need more? Please rush. Bullocks, Los Angeles. Rush new Futuramas. We knew that the glamorous new jewelry design dollar twenty-five Futurama would change the lipstick habits of every woman in America, and it has. Yes, and for a very good reason. Because now, for $1.25, the price of ordinary lipstick, you can have any Revlon lipstick plus this glamorous Futurama, both for only $1.25. The same price you pay for any leading brand of lipstick alone. Fantastic, only $1.25. Not only a fabulous buy, but you actually save money every time you use it. This new Futurama is a permanent case. This old-fashioned brass case can only be used for one lipstick. Yet, they both cost exactly the same price, $1.25. But with your glamorous Futurama, you pay $1.25 one time only. When you need a new lipstick, you pay just 90 cents for any Revlon refill. You save 35 cents each time. And see how easy it is to change refills? Click out, click in, and you're finished. Be smart, be glamorous. Get Futurama plus lipstick for only $1.25. That's news. It's the greatest cosmetic value in history. Futurama plus lipstick, $1.25. I think a good idea is to get yours tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> Last week, Giovanna answered very excitingly the $8,000 question. She's had a week to think over a decision, and she's here tonight as uh, you, sir. With, after having had a week to think it over, whether you're going to take the $8,000 or leave it and try for $16,000. Has Giovanna arrived at a decision, Giovanna? Ho capito, sì. You mind? Ho riflettuto molto. E ho deciso da buona giocatrice di andare avanti. I have reflected very much on this point, and as a good gambler, I decided to go on. She's going to go ahead for $16,000. All right. Giovanna, Ms. Combo, if you're ready, Lynn, would you escort Giovanna to the booth for the $16,000 question, please? Oh, yes. Giovanna, all right? All right. Can you hear me? See me? Everything all right? Yes. All right. May I have the $16,000 question? Thank you. Mr. Kumba, uh, as last week, I will read the question once. I won't repeat it. And Giovanna will then have 30 seconds to determine her answer. She understand that? I capito, sì. secondi per rispondere alla domanda. All right. The category is American history. The formative days of the American Republic are full of firsts. Would you like to repeat one part of the time? I giorni formativi della Repubblica Americana sono pieni delle seguenti cose. Primo. For $16,000, I want Giovanna to tell me, one, who was the first president to use Washington, D.C. as his capital? 
Vuole sapere, numero uno, quale fu il primo presidente a usare la città di Washington come capitale? Next, who was the first president to be born after the declaration of independence? A chi fu il primo presidente nato dopo la dichiarazione di indipendenza? Sì. Then, Washington's cabinet was of course the first cabinet. Who was the first secretary of state, secretary of war, secretary of the treasury? Eh, vuole sapere naturalmente, il gabinetto di Washington fu il primo gabinetto, va bene. Chi fu il primo segretario di Stato, chi fu il primo ministro della guerra e il primo ministro del tesoro? Oh. Finally, who was the first chief justice of the Supreme Court? Chi fu il primo giudice supremo della Corte Suprema degli Stati Uniti? Giovanna ha 30 secondi per rispondere. Good luck. Buona fortuna. question one part of the time. First, who was the first president to use Washington DC as his capital? Prima domanda, chi fu il primo presidente ad usare Washington DC come la capitale? Fu uh, John Adams. Correct. Next, who was the first president to be born after the declaration of independence? Chi fu il primo presidente nato dopo la dichiarazione di indipendenza? Il presidente nato il 5 dicembre 1782. Mi sembra che sia Van Buren. Uh, president uh, born on the December the 5th, 1782. I believe it is Van Buren. Correct. Then, Washington's cabinet was of course the first cabinet. Who was the first secretary of state, secretary of war, secretary of the treasury? Uh, il gabinetto di Washington fu il primo, naturalmente. Chi fu il primo ministro degli esteri, il primo segretario di Stato? Chi il primo ministro della guerra e il primo ministro del tesoro? Primo ministro, segretario di Stato sotto Washington fu Jefferson. Correct. Segretario alla guerra fu Knox. Knox is correct. Segretario al tesoro fu Hamilton. Correct. Finally. For $16,000, who was the first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court? Per 16.000 dollari, chi fu il primo giudice supremo della Corte Suprema? J. You're right for $16,000. That's tough enough to wait for in English. That's very exciting. Congratulations, Giovanna. How, you feel good? Come si sente? You, you feel... How do you feel? Come si sente? Meglio. Better. <laughs> Better. <laughs> All right, your next question is worth $32,000, Ms. Combo. We want Giovanna to think it over for a week. If she decides to go ahead for $32,000... Here are three books. I would imagine you will have somebody translate them. A Short History of the United States, Pictorial History of American Presidents, an Encyclopedia Britannica, which sounds a little Italian itself, volume 22. Oh. There you are, Mr. Comba. We'll see you next week, Giovanna. Congratulations on tonight. Buonanotte, buonanotte, Mr. Comba. Thank you and good night. Bill, who is Revlon's next guest? Well, Hal, back for the third week on his climb to the $64,000 question is our brush salesman from the Bronx, whose category is drama, Wilton J. Springer. Well, wasn't that exciting that just happened with Giovanna? Oh, it's wonderful. It was wonderful. Uh, I forgot to ask you the couple of weeks that you've been on, Mr. Springer. Are you a married man yourself? Oh, yes. Uh, I've been married for about 20 years. Yeah. And uh, we have a daughter, Paula, age 15, and she goes to Taft High School in the Bronx. She's in the third term. And uh, my wife is a legal secretary. I forgot what I asked you. <laughs> oh, the answer is yes. Yes what? 
You forgot which answer. <laughs> Does your family share your avid interest in the, in the drama, Wilton? Well, my, my daughter is uh, beginning to show an interest, and my wife is very much interested. Yeah. Uh, once we uh, attended about five shows in one week. Really, in one week? You must have had to cut out lunches for a couple of weeks after that. <laughs> I guess so. What do you do to, uh, to besides going to the theater, to, to fill out your love of the theater? Do you collect playbills or...? Oh, yes. I have... Um, big cardboard box full of them and I would have had a lot more but uh, I stored some down in my uncle's uh, basement and they got waterlogged. Well, in every basement a little water must fall. I guess so. Spring. <laughs> We're going to find out your decision in just a moment but before... Well, if you aren't getting every smidge of dirt and makeup off your pores, chances are you'll see trouble because a half clean skin can cause ugly disturbances. Using a greasy cleansing cream may be to blame. Today's cosmetic research shows they're too thick to penetrate and they only get off surface dirt. It takes a modern liquid cleanser to reach down and lift out the dirt. And that's just what happens when you use Revlon's wonderful new liquid cleanser. Clean and clean. It reaches up to five times deeper for dirt. Greasy creams clean only the top cell layer of your skin, but clean and clear cleans five, lifts out the dirt that creams and soaps leave behind. That's why Revlon can make you this promise. Use clean and clear, and in just five days, you'll see it uncover a purer, finer, brighter skin. Get clean and clear. You'll say, my face never felt so clean, my skin never looked so clear. Clean and clear. Hey, Wilton, last week you answered correctly the $8,000 question, the category of drama. You've had a week to think it over, and you're here tonight to tell us whether you're going to Take that $8,000 or leave it and try for $16,000 tonight. Have you arrived at a decision? May I say a few words, Hal? Please do. Well, $8,000 is a pretty good sum of money for the average man. And yes, it is. I've enjoyed working with the wonderful people on this program, and I'd like to return sometime in the near future on the challenge. Uh -huh. So I think I'll take the $8,000. You're going to take the $8,000 and quit. Fine, let's... Okay, if you want to applaud. <laughs> Wilton, I can't, I uh, truthfully can't say that I blame you. I think that if I were a contestant, I'd probably get as far as the stage door. Winning $8,000 is a lot of money. However, congratulations on winning $8,000. I know you'll want to see the check. Here it is. Mr. Fight has it. Made out to Wilton J. Springer. $8,000. Thank you very much, Hal. Wilton, thank you for it being with us. Congratulations. With and maybe I'll with the audience. See you on the other show on Sunday night. All Thank right. you and good night. Good, good night, night Will. <laughs> Bill, who is Revlon's next guest? Well, Hal, our next guest on the golden threshold of the $64,000 question is from Copenhagen, New York, Mrs. Elizabeth Reed. <laughs> good evening, Miss Reed. Welcome to the show. Very glad to be Come here. Come on down here with me. May I call you Elizabeth? Elizabeth, Betsy, Bessie, or Bess. Anything you choose. All right, let's see. I think Lizzie is nice. Anybody oh, call no, you Lizzie? No, no. Call me Bess. Bess? Okay, <laughs> Bess. Do you mind telling us your age? 73, going on 72. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a little late, but many happy returns. Why, thank you. What do you do in upstate New York? I live a very quiet life in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. I'm not the rebel that I was in 1912. Really? No, what happened in 1912? Oh, I was expelled from Syracuse University. <laughs> expelled from school? Expelled. That's a very unusual thing for a young lady in 1912. A young lady. 1912, of course. What, what uh, caused this, re what was this rebellion oh, that caused you to be expelled? I started a food strike for better food You started a food strike? Mm -hmm. And no, what happened? The well, the food was awful. Yeah. Chancellor's temper was awful. What happened to me was awful. And I was thrown out. Well, I'm glad you landed here. So am I. It takes a lot of nerve to start a food strike in a university. Wow, that's... Well, I never thought ahead too far. <laughs> Probably had some sandwiches in your lunchbox. That's the idea. Felt a little secure. 
Well, anyway, Bess, right behind you is Revlon's list of categories, and if you'll choose one, we can get going and see if you can win a little well, money. Which one do you think you'd like to... I want my favorite author, Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens? Mm -hmm. We've had another lady on the show choosing Dickens. Let's hope that you do as well. Lynn, if you'll press number three in the IBM machine, we'll get our questions on Charles Dickens. Elizabeth just said somebody backstage has called her Mrs. Charles Dickens. That's ridiculous. Come on down here, Bess. You know the rules of the game, so well, we won't waste any time with that. I you think so. You've seen the show before. Oh, many times. I watch you every week. I wouldn't miss it. How do you like me? I think you're wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> I call you the candy kid. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet of you. All right, here we go. You know the rules, so we'll get going. Your category is Dickens, and here's your first question. Dickens used mouth-filling descriptive names for many of his characters. In what novel do the following characters appear? For $64, Lizzie Hexham. In the, uh, Our Mutual Friend. You're right, for $64. <laughs> the next question's worth $128. Do you feel like going ahead? Go ahead. All right, for $128, Uncle Pumblechook. Great expectations. You're right for $128. How do you pronounce Pumblechook? Is that the correct That's pronunciation right. of that? Mm -hmm. All right, your next question's worth $256. Do you feel like going ahead for that? Well, I hope to. All right, I'm right with you. I'm not going anyplace. Let's go for $256. The character's name is Datchery. Oh, he is the uh, detective in... Edwin Drood. Edwin Drood is correct for $256. Your next question is worth $512, and you're rapidly I've approaching the first plateau. What years. was that? I've seen as much of that in 10 years. Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you feel like going ahead oh, for $512? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. The character's name is Miss Monflathers. She had a lady school in Old Curiosity Shop. You're right for $512. <laughs> Well, if you haven't seen it, you have $512 now that can't be taken away from you, sure? Bess. No, that's yours no matter what happens. Your next <laughs> question is worth a thousand... Now. Pardon? Getting a weather eye from Mr. Copeland over there. <laughs> <laughs> Your next question is worth a thousand dollars, and that's in the possession of our Mr. Ben Fight, who's vice president of the Manufacturers Trust Company, a fine, upstanding well, gentleman. This is a imposing, I mean. And I if you'll follow me over there, we'll I get know. a hold of that first. Please, come on. Mm -hmm. Here we go. <laughs> You're, I beg your pardon? So many gentlemen, I say. So many gentlemen. Speak up. Speak up, Bess. I say so many gentlemen. Well, that's know, the way I it is. retirement. <laughs> Bess, you might as well go for the $1,000 question. You have nothing to lose, huh? If you say so. Trust me. May I have a please? I trust you. Okay, here is your $1,000 question. For $1,000, tell me, to what African project for the public good does Mrs. Jellybee in Bleak House devote herself? Well, the raising of the coffee berry on the left bank of the Niger in uh, Borea Buluga. Any one of those would have been fine. You're right for $1,000. Well, that's $1,000 that you haven't seen in 10 that's years. Right. Now, your next question is worth $2,000. You're we're doubling very rapidly. Do you feel like going ahead? Wonderful. As long as it's a twin, go ahead. All right, let's go. May I have the $2,000 question? <sighs> Come on down here. Well, What's better. going on up there? I don't see any questions. I want to be retiring. It's more proper. Yeah, but stay in the studio. Don't retire out in 50 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Your next question for $2,000 is thusly. In Great Expectations, a house is described in which all the clocks had been stopped. For $2,000, tell me whose house was it and when had the clocks been stopped? Was well, Satis house. Miss Havisham's home. That's And when correct. her lover deserted her, she stopped all the clocks and ceased to live. That's, and her lover deserted her when exactly? 20 minutes of nine. Well. When they were about to be married. On her wedding day, that's what I wanted. You're right for $2,000. <laughs> Yes, you're going to give me a complex if you keep walking away from me like that. Oh, I can't. You I now can't have $2,000. Your next question is worth $4,000. Do you feel like going ahead for that? Oh, yes. I will die one right. time or another. No, nothing like that will happen. Here we are. <laughs> now, 
I'll bet that's the last time I'm going to talk to you about that. <laughs> Here is your $4,000 question. Dickens supplied his characters with strange or unusual occupations. For $4,000, tell me the occupation of each of the following four. First, Old Crook. Next, Dirtles. And finally, Jerry Cruncher. What was the occupation of first old crook? Rag and bottle shop in the house. Junk dealer, that's absolutely correct. Next, what was the occupation of Dirtles? Well, he was a sort of a handy man with a tombstone. He had rheumatism, called it tombatism. Well, just come back here. <laughs> well, I'll instant. come back now. I'll stay. <laughs> That's correct. He was a stonemason or cutter of gravestones. Finally, what was the occupation of Jerry Cruncher? He was a resurrection man. He dug bodies up in the middle of the night. That's absolutely correct for $4,000. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we don't have enough time to complete the next You're closing. All right. Well, thank you very much. But let me explain the rules of the game. No matter what happens now, you've just won this reached Revlon second plateau. And if you go ahead for any of the... Questions and miss, your consolation prize will be a brand new 1956 Cadillac convertible, but we'll get into that further next week. Okay? Best, thank you for being with us tonight. You're charming, you're a doll, and I wish you'd stay close to me. We'll see you next week. Thank you and congratulations. As you know, girls, it's fall, party-going, party-giving time, and you'll want your hair to be as pretty-looking as your party dresses. Right, Evelyn? You're absolutely right, Hal. And girls, here's your sure shortcut to beautiful, lasting curls. Simply set and spray your pin curls with Revlon Satin Set. You know, setting with water won't give firm, lasting curls. Ordinary sprays not meant for setting won't either. But when you use Revlon Satin Set, you get firm, springy curls that last from one shampoo to another. With Satin Set, you end bothersome nightly pinups once and for all. And with Satin Set, there's no lacquer, no stiffness. Just lovely curls that stay put even in gusty autumn weather. So girls, to have and to hold your pin curls, get Revlon Satin Set tomorrow and save money with a large economy size. Thank you. Before we close, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to remind you to tune in this Sunday night when Ralph Story referees the slugfest between Edward G. Robinson and Vincent Price and the Reverend Kershaw defends his jazz title. We'll see you again, of course, next Tuesday night when Revlon once again presents the $64,000 question. Thank you for being with us tonight, and good night, everybody. Good night. If you'd like to be a contestant, just send us a letter addressed to the $64,000 question, CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York. Tell us about yourself and enclose a snapshot which cannot be returned. Be sure to be with us next week when Revlon will again bring you the $64,000 question. Transportation for contestants brought back a second week is arranged by American Airlines. American Airlines will fly contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. Gowns by Brunel, jewelry by Napier, your announcer Bill Rogers.